And that's what we've been saying throughout the night. Two fantastic candidates. Fiona Cotvoy's very impressive speech. We have got a few minutes for final thoughts. I should mention in these postal votes, we've just got the first few postal votes, about 5,000, a lead of 70 to the Liberals in that split of about 5,000, John Barillaro. So, initially, the postal votes favouring the Liberals, only a lead of 70 in that breakdown. Is that where you'd expect it? And your final thoughts as we wrap up tonight? Yeah, look, you know, again, it is tight to call tonight. It is a... Um, it'll take a few days to get through the preferences. Uh, but I'm, I'm still confident of the pre-poll numbers. Uh, I'm, I'm, co I'm confident in how they're breaking. The trend all night... Uh, I'm, I'm not going to change my position. The Liberals will win tonight. Uh, will win, not tonight, but will win uh, and get over the line. Andrew? Well, yeah, a number of things to come. So, Quimbian pre-poll, which is rather large. I've heard that's about 50-50 from the Liberals. Labor's saying they've got a lead with 54 there. Uh, that means all that's left is Jindabyne and Naruma pre-polls, both of which on the day fell to the Liberals. So, even though... Uh, the Liberals might be slightly behind on two-party preferred. Now, the suggestion is they'll, they'll fall ahead with that. And as one government source said to me, it will go down to the last of the postals, just saying, in the last five minutes. So, no one's no one very confident at the moment, I'd have to say. It's too close to call still, and we'll have to wait to see whether uh, John Barillaro or Graham Richardson's buying lunch. Exactly. Example. Peter Credlin, your final thoughts as we wrap up tonight? I think it'll be a couple of days, obviously, before we get uh, a result. I think there could also be a recount, so it could go on for a number of days beyond that. I think whatever the outcome, it is a disappointing result for Anthony Albanese. He would want to have had a stronger result than this. It's devastating if Labor loses, but it's disappointing even if Labor wins just by the, the margin. And pretty disappointing for the Greens, too. I wonder if this will have some soul-searching in around the left of politics in this country. I doubt it, but it's a disappointing result for them. And uh, the shooters, I think the National Party have woken up to them. I think the Coalition, more broadly, uh, needs to contend with them, particularly at the next election and, and potentially in Queensland as well, coming up in October. Richard? I, uh, I'd have to say that um, this is a result that I think is a bit disappointing. Uh, I, would have liked, uh, I would have liked a few more hundred Labor votes uh, than we got. Um, sometimes it doesn't work out the way you plan. Uh, but uh, a win is a win. And what happens is over time, people forget the amount, they just know who won. So Albo will get away with it, but it wasn't his finest hour. So you still think so? OK. And uh, Richard Miles, you, you um, share that, that hope, that optimism? Oh, well, I don't know. That's, that's, the, that's the real answer here. And I think the thing is that normally on election night, when it's too close to call by the end of the night, you, you know, you're talking about it going down to a couple of hundred votes either way. I think the, the possible spread of outcome is much wider tonight than it would normally be on a night where it's too close to call. And that's just a function of how many votes are still yet to be counted. So it, it, it really could go either way. But... Um, I, from where we started at, at the beginning of the night, in, in the context in which this election was being fought, um, you know, to be honest, this is a better result than I had thought. Um, to, to contest this in a global pandemic without Mike Kelly's personal vote was always going to be really hard for us. That, that's, that's, that's the obvious point, which everyone understands. Um, and right now, we, we, we finished the night uh, and we're in the hunt. And, um, and I actually think, you know, if we get over the line, that will be a remarkable result. But it, it, it's, it's a better position than I'd hoped. I'll tell you, remarkable. Angus Taylor, the stamina, is coming back on Sunday agenda tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Bless you for that, uh, Angus Taylor. But your uh, final thoughts tonight, <laughs> in the meantime, before we chat tomorrow. But how do you wrap up this evening? Well, well I, I, I've realised what I've got myself into now. I've got to drive home and... Uh, for an hour and, and then do that tomorrow morning. But look, um, three big Queen Bian booths to come in. Um, Jim, Jindabyne's still to come in. Daruma, of course. But you'd say the weight of those is very much in our favour um, and that's the way that, that, that it's broken tonight. Um, those Queen Bian booths have tended to go very much our way. So I'm optimistic. We're not there yet. Uh, what I would say is I think this is absolutely devastating for Anthony Albanese. I mean, a five percentage point improvement in our position on primaries um, and of course we know that uh, in by-elections like this on average there's been a 3.8 percent swing against the government so an extraordinary result an extraordinary endorsement 
of Scott Morrison's leadership, but also an extraordinary uh, endorsement of Fiona, who we just heard from. Uh, she, she is a stellar individual. Two good candidates in this race, there's no doubt about it, but she is absolutely a mm. uh, wonderful, wonderful person, and we heard that tonight. And we really want her around the table to fight for Eden Monero and make sure it gets through this rebuilding process in the coming years, and I'm hopeful she will.